Glad to welcome back from the City of Jackson Department of Engineering, Engineer Troy White. Hey, Troy. Hey, thanks for having me back. Yeah, good to see you. Yeah. So, rainy afternoon, uh, crews get a little bit of a break. Yeah, not much going on on a rainy day <laughs> like this. Not very productive. With the beautiful weather we've had, though, over the last few weeks, it's got to be a boon to the uh, projects. Yeah, we've been uh, making some progress. Um, you know, there's those challenges right now of... Um, there's so much work out there and getting the, uh, getting the work done and finding the manpower to do that. But um, the weather's been perfect. We're kind of at that time of the year where we're you know, trying to wrap things up before winter gets here. But we're, and we're in pretty good shape for that right now. Days like this, it's a minor setback, but it'll be okay. We, nice. got, we still got plenty of time left and we're- uh, So you're facing the same night. issues everyone else has. Uh, the uh, worker, uh, the labor pool. You just don't yeah, our contractors, you know, they, they struggle to have enough guys to, or enough people to, uh, you know, to keep things moving full, full speed. The other challenge is always going to be materials. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, on our light, on our light signals, it takes a year to get poles in now. Um, on other materials, it takes a while. So there's, there are those challenges, but it, it is getting done. Really what we do is we build all those challenges into the schedule so we're not, we're not surprised by them anymore. Um, you know, to the public, sometimes it seems like there's delays, but um, they're kind of built into the schedule so that way we don't get caught in a situation where, uh, you know, winter comes and we, we've only got something not, not yet done. Yeah. So those, uh, those black uh, mast arms, which uh, I think everybody agrees that make uh, the city and the intersections look awesome, those aren't off-the-shelf items. No, those are custom fabricated per installation. Um, I think the ones we've been waiting for recently, they, uh, they get fabricated down in Texas, actually. Mm. They get uh, painted in southern Ohio, and then they uh, make their way up to Jackson eventually. But, um, you know, those, that type of work's being done for all over the country. You know, there's, there's mm. limited manufacturers, um, the limited, limited number of manufacturers, so uh, it's just kind of you, you get your paperwork in as quick as you can and uh, get on the list and then they get to it when they get to it. And I'm, I'm, sure they're, uh, I'm sure they're working at full capacity, but full capacity just isn't enough to keep up with the demand right now. Yeah. Well, let's take a look at a couple of the projects that are still underway in the city. First, we'll look at North Street between Wisner and West, and everybody's uh, really happy about this uh, project because it's uh, it's been needed. Yeah, it's just a it's a removing the pavement, and replacing the pavement. Um, it's a it's a pretty straightforward project. The biggest challenge on a project like that is we need to maintain traffic for people running businesses down there. Mm -hmm. You know, in a residential area, you might take all the pavement out and uh, you know let the residents drive on the gravel for a little bit, but um, with the quantity of traffic down there, it's just not reasonable. So. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we come up with a traffic control plan. We leave half of it open at one time, have the other half closed for the work zone. Um, but you know, when you close half the road, that means you have to reduce. It is open for traffic, but it's only open for one-way traffic. <laughs> yeah. But uh, you know, every property remains accessible. There's been some challenges, but um, you know, when uh, when property owners reach out to us, when the businesses reach out to us, we we work to address those concerns. Yeah, uh, Wisner and North uh, intersection, uh, as an example, is uh, very challenging, but um, there are ways to avoid it, and there are some workarounds. Well, and if you need to go there to, uh, to go to a store, you can do it. Mm -hmm. you, just, you know, it depends on which direction you're coming in, but they're signing out there to direct you around the work zone, so you can, uh, you can drive through the work zone. All right, and the other project uh, we want to check out is the MLK Equality Trail. Between yeah. uh, West and Prospect. Yeah, West and Prospect. I see you got um, you, the the footage there doesn't show that they were out there. I think they were out there yesterday and the day before, actually placing concrete. So um, the the concrete works actually. It's 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 started and it's going. It's just going to be uh, a matter of how long it takes to finish that up. Well, you see there they're forming it. The, the interesting thing is you know you got to they usually try to. Uh, form in the afternoon, place concrete in the morning, so that way while they're working in the afternoon, they're there to, to tend the concrete, make sure nobody drives down it or messes it up, you know, by accident or, or on purpose. But <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there's, there's like a process to it, kind of a rolling operation, set forms in the evening or in the afternoon, pour new concrete in the morning, 
spend the afternoon putting forms up, you know, and just kind of roll your way down along the trail. Yeah, I don't walk in uh, new concrete. Uh, your footprints, we don't want to see them. No, we don't want to see them. And, and, you know, it seems like it's defaced, but then it's defaced for forever. Forever, yeah. This um, concrete is going to match the packet trail that goes to the park. Correct. Matches the packet trail, and pretty much that's our standard. You know, we've um, the the other portions of the MLK trail that we've we've uh, rebuilt, like down by the King Center, mm -hmm. it matches that, and um, uh, you know, it gives us a more durable surface. It'll be longer lasting. Um, one thing that uh, is true, it's kind of an un unintended bonus. But um, you know we've got the MLK trail is lit. Mm -hmm. Well, when you when you build it in concrete and uh, you, it makes your lighting that much brighter. Sure. So uh, light yeah. reflection. Right. So it's kind of a unintended bonus, but uh, it it's a uh, it makes for a better trail. Yeah, I think uh, all those who have been using the concrete portions of the trails uh, appreciate the smooth surface. It is uh, noticeable, and um, I think. Just about everybody likes it better. Yeah, I think so. And the other thing is, you know, now that we're rebuilding the trails, the, the original trail was built, I think, in 1992. Hmm. And there were no standards at that time for bike trails. It was yeah. just kind of like, so really all they did is, you know, the railroad tracks came out. They, uh, they paved a minimum width, a little bit of asphalt right down the old railroad mm -hmm. grade. And, uh, you know, now we're bringing it up to standard in terms of making it wide enough, making sure the drainage is appropriate. And... Uh, you know the curves for the for bikers and stuff are the right uh, radius and things like this so um, it's good it's upgrading it but it's also making it right yeah it was amazing when you first told me that the other day 30 year old trail uh, wow I had no idea <laughs> didn't seem that long but there it is and you make uh, you made some changes and you've uh, I think when the trail was originally uh, belt, you didn't have to have 90 degree angles at the intersections. No, that was just, like I said, it just followed the railroad yeah. grade. So for some intersections, it crossed pretty good, but like on some of them, it was quite, it was quite a, quite an angle. Yeah. Which um, made the crossing distance, you know, doubled the crossing distance while you get to Prospect, which is a very wide road, wider than it needs to be. But then you make that even wider by putting the crossing on an angle. And uh, it made challenges, so at some point uh, we were able to secure some safety funding and, and um, shore those up, get better signing, reduce the crossing distance, that type of thing. Well, pretty soon uh, we won't be seeing any more orange boroughs. We've got the MDOT projects at the railroad bridges. Those uh, looks like they're within just a couple of weeks of being done. Yeah, I was on a, um, I, I got some information earlier this week. They're still planning on being out of here by the end of the month, so mm -hmm. I do know I've, I've you know, walking the dog, going by there, and uh, I know they have the uh, they have the curbs in now. And I think right now, if it wasn't for the weather, they'd probably be putting the sidewalks in. So, you know, once the curbs and sidewalks in, really, what you're left to do is to pave it and um, pave it and put down your grass and grass seed. So, um, when they say we're going to be done by the end of the month, I think it's that's very reasonable. And that's it for the year, then. Yeah, until till next year, <laughs> <laughs> then, then it all starts over again. Yeah. Oh, you guys have done a great job. Uh, everything you do, we've had uh, improvements on uh, how our community looks and functions. Uh, thanks so much. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, from the City of Jackson Engineering Department, Troy White. We've got birthdays to celebrate the Jennifer Scanlon.